Now, when you read We Real Cool by Gwendolyn Brooks, not everybody can hear the lyricism, the emotion, and, and really what the poem captures. But if you've ever been to like a poetry slam or one of those like live readings, this is just one of those ones that has this attitude that captures a movement, it captures a time, it captures this feeling. And I'm gonna leave a link to a video down below that I think really helps to express that for people who, you know, if they read it flat, okay, that's one thing. But when you see how this poem can come to life, you'll see how it steps to a whole nother level. Yeah, I remember reading it the first time and then you sent me that link and I watched and I was like, oh, now I feel it. I get it. I understand. And I think that sometimes that's how poetry is meant to be. That's really going to, you know, jazz it up for you. Pun intended. <laughs> Coming up on the Codex Cantina, We Re Real Cool by Gwendolyn Brooks. The Pool Players, Seven at the Golden Shovel. We Real Cool. We Left School. We lurk late, we strike straight, we sing sin, we thin gin, we jazz June, we die soon. And again, I'm gonna leave a link down below for our presentation on it that is just next level, mine was horrendous. But let's jump <laughs> into an example of what is considered jazz poetry where it demonstrates this lyricism and this, you know, this rhythm that really encapsulates a musical movement. We've talked about many times on this channel, famous authors like Langston Hughes and others that have really tried to create this Afro-America sense of literature and history through the 20th century. And I love how Gwendolyn Brooks has taken that and simplified it down to a very short poem and given it this jazzy spice that really brings home what it meant to, to be you know, somebody living through the 1960s. She's quoted as saying the inspiration behind this is she was on the south side of Chicago and she saw all these young boys playing hooky, skipping school. And instead of wondering what they did or, or, or anything along those lines that, that a parent or an adult may think, she just thought, what were they thinking? And that's what gave birth to this poem, this We Real Cool, this Pool Players 7, at the golden shovel. And I guess one of my questions I'd have is seven. What does seven mean in the title of this? Is that the, the number of boys that she sees? That's kind of what I took it as. I guess online there are people that talk about like, could this potentially be referring to the seven deadly sins? And they'll break down this piece where they show how each of the seven different sins kind of shows up in the piece as well. And I thought that was an interesting take on it. Oh, okay. I didn't think about that. Yeah, seven deadly sins, so... Cool. Now, here's my question for why I asked that. We lurk late. Who's the we in this story? Who's telling, who's narrating this poem? I thought that this was, she was talking more about like maybe African-American people or her people, uh, young people, maybe. Okay, so kind of like a, a movement. I wonder, I, I almost viewed it as the seven boys that were skipping school. And that this we dun dun became kind of like their banner, their their song for how they are. That their parrot. Have you heard the term paratexas? Mm -mm, no. It's the you know the I came I saw I conquered where you like had these quick lines that aren't separated by like and or or. It's just like quick repeating. Oh, things. like their mantra. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of what this was to me. It was these seven boys, and this was their I came, I saw, I conquered. This is their way of life. And when Gwendolyn Brooks pictures these these children, she's she's putting them in a situation where they're skipping school, right? And I guess what does, and I know as a school teacher, this is going to hurt your heart, but to some students that have a pessimistic view of school, what is school? Is it something to rebel against? Is it unity? Is it conformity? Is it something where it doesn't allow them to express their individuality? Oh, for sure. I think that a lot of times we do constrain them. They're restricted by bells. They have to go to ask or the bathroom. They're putting these little cubicles. They're sitting in rows. Uh, and it very much feels prisonistic in, in terms of their life where they're trying to figure themselves out and, you know, they're, we're restricting their, their, their freedoms and their wants and joys and saying, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this, instead of what would you like to do? And here is seven boys who are saying, what is, what does it mean to be us? 
What is the African-American art form? What do we do? And in the summer, when they're free to do whatever they want, you know, the jazz June line, if you will, at least how that's how I took it, is, you know, in June, what do you do when you're a little boy? You're free to do whatever you Summertime. want. Summertime, you play outside. Yeah, you can you can go to those pool halls. You can go to your friends' places. And these are boys that are like, we're going to do that all the time. You know what I mean? We're going to we're going to take our life. We're going to avoid school. Right? We're playing hooky and they're going to do the things that like sing sin, quote unquote. They they know that what they're doing is considered morally wrong to I think society, but they're like this is us. This is how we find our voice. And that seems very empowering to me. Yeah, I, I love the kind of like contradiction here of, you know, school is confined and summertime is freedom and jazz is that freedom in music to kind of break the rules, right? And that's what the boys are doing are breaking the rules. Well, what's interesting too is I guess Gwendolyn Brooks herself has said her intention with how she kind of ends the we at the end and then it's jazz, June, sing, sin, thin, gin. Her intention was the we was to be soft. And that the other parts were going to be harsher, right? Like the, the the parts that rhyme have assonance, consonants, all this, you know, musical and jazz like elements to it. Those were meant to be the forefront, the louder parts that are spoken, probably better performed by anyone else besides than my reading. But <laughs> it's it's the idea of this is the definitional part, the what we do, what we are, what we think, not the we, but the sing sin the thin gin like what we do matters in life and i think it's interesting how these boys breaking against the mold find their voice through those actions even if they know that that's not what we're supposed to be doing at least what the parents tell us we're supposed to be doing yeah i think it's uh kind of cool that that's where she wanted the focus i know as i was reading it, it was hard for me because I'm looking at the non-sentence structure of this because, again, as anybody knows on that's watched the channel, I struggle with poetry, even though I love this one and, and I think it's very accessible, is the we is what hit home for me because I think that's something that empowers these boys and empowers the African-American community is the we-ness of it, of we come together, we can make something different, we can be better, we can make change. And that's really what hit home for me. And I was like, if I was thinking about this as a song and I watched the link you sent, it was that we, bam, we, bam, we, bam. And mm -hmm. I really, I really honed in on that. And maybe that wasn't her intention, but I felt the power behind that just as much as the, the, uh, you know, the sin and gin in, in the poem. Now, something that might have struck you with the bam is the we die soon at the end. Kind of shocking, all these things about life, how we define ourselves, what we choose to do with our time. Does that mean the the singing, the sin, the thin gin, you know, the drinking, does that mean they accept that they're going to die sooner than others? And, and how did you take that line, I guess? Historically, I really thought about, okay, if Gwendolyn Brooks is experiencing the 1950s and the 1960s in America, even in some place as progressive as maybe Chicago, uh, I still think that there is a lot of issues um, with African-Americans and, and others in our, our culture. And I think that she's seeing a lot of young black men die. And uh, I think that that is encompassing of all of, of not just maybe these seven boys, but, you know, we die as a people unless we make a change or doing something better as a people's. Do you think that influenced her to think that they had to extract more out of the time that they did have in the same way that these boys are like, we ain't got time for school. We're going to die too soon, sooner than others that we need to live life to its fullest while we can. Yes. And no, uh, definitely because the, the boys are, seem to be enjoying and living life to the fullest, but they seem to be doing childlike things, right? If you're living life to the fullest, um, are you going to play like a child always? Are you going to strive to move forward in life and have more and grow up and be better and maybe help the next generation? Because if you continue in these childlike things, then change might not take place because you're going to be treated as a child. Mm, interesting. Interesting. Now, the We Jazz June, I think, is an interesting line because I guess it's controversial because some people took it 
in ways the author didn't intend. And the author even makes jokes about how, well, that's, that's the way you want to take it. That's fine. And I think that's so true to the spirit of this channel. But to me, the way I took that is the, well, we jazz, like this is how we entertain ourselves. This is the music, the expression of ourselves. June, right? The time of freedom, the time uh, where I get to choose how to spend my time. But they do that all the time. And I think that was kind of the climax for me is the idea of being able to fully realize your own humanity, your own time on this earth, and to express that in a way that maybe maybe isn't morally correct with that sin, uh, sin, but it still doesn't necessarily harm anyone being at the pool table, right? Maybe it's not pushing society together, but maybe we're not all destined to push society together. I don't know. I don't know. I, I agree with you that I, I, <laughs> I want people to be good, outstanding citizens, but it's also conflicted with the idea of letting out and letting your hair loose and being yourself as opposed to always being in the conformity of what school demands sometimes. Well, to talk a little bit quickly, I, I thought about when I was a, a teenager and it's June and I was going out and, and playing and, uh, you, you know, jumping on my bike and riding around, you know, till it was dark outside. I had that sense of freedom and, uh, you know, it was, it'd get a little cool out in the summer. And, uh, you know, I, I, I reminisced with that. It kind of took me back to my childhood. Uh, but really the whole thing culminated at the end where it took almost that bleak turn of the, we, we die soon. And I think that, um, I think she was talking about not just those seven boys, but I think she was talking about a broader base of, you know, not just the African American community. I think all of us that we, we have to come together and that, yes, there can be play and fun, but if we're going to make a difference, uh, we, we need to come together as a, as a people. Very good piece. I definitely appreciate it. And again, check out that link that does it justice as opposed to my reading of it. We post videos every Monday and Thursday. We'll leave a playlist for other poetry talks that we've had on this channel. Look forward to seeing you and hope you do decide to subscribe. Una out. Be cool. Peace.